Whenever I draw with colour pencils, I always go through the same steps. Today, I want to show you those steps and explain to you why I do them. First, let's take a quick minute to talk about materials because you won't be able to do this without the right ones. Obviously, you'll need colour pencils, but it's not the most important part. You can make some very nice drawings with cheap colour pencils. The most important thing you need is the right paper. So I'm not gonna spend ages here comparing the different types of paper. I use Bristol board and I use that because it's nice and smooth. It's very easy to put down smooth pencil and generally control where it's going. And it's also possible to build up a good amount of layers, which is what we're wanting to do here. Before I start any drawing, I need a reference photo. And I tend to get my reference photos from either Pixabay or from Pexels. I've put links in the description. What I'm looking for in a reference is something that is clear with a lot of detail. And I also want a good amount of contrast. So I want there to be decent shading on the reference. So for example, I would use something like this rather than something like this. I then need to make a sketch. So I want to sketch out the outlines and the key shapes. I generally think it's easiest to do this using the grid method. This is where you put a grid on your reference photo. So that's something that you could do on the computer. And you also draw the same number of squares on your piece of paper. And then rather than trying to draw the picture as a whole, you are only drawing what you can see in each individual square. And then once you've drawn out everything, you can then erase the lines of the grid. I have done a whole video on sketching and the different methods that you can use so check that out I'll link that below as well. The main thing that you should know about the sketch is that you're not trying to draw a masterpiece here you are literally trying to draw the outlines of all of the prominent shapes. So you don't need to worry about any sort of shading or anything like that. The other thing to bear in mind is that you do want your sketch to be as light as possible. Just light enough so you can see it. You wouldn't often notice that my sketch doesn't show up on camera. That's because it is so light. Now at this point, I start thinking about adding in some color and that can feel a bit overwhelming, but there is a tool that you can make that will help massively. This is color swatches. This is where you take every color that you have within your pencil set and you draw them out, I tend to do them in a grid. I go from as light as I can to as dark as I can so that I can see the full range for each pencil. And I make sure I label them so I know which one's which. This is so you can see what the pencils actually look like on the paper that you'll be using. When I was beginning with color pencils, I used to rely on the outer casing and that is really not a good guide of what the pencil actually looks like. And if you look at this pencil, you can see how different the barrel of the pencil is to the lead of the pencil. So now I've got my swatches, I can use these to compare to my reference photo. So let's take four drawings with four different subject matters and I'll show you how the process is the same throughout all of them. So let's start off by looking at the lion. I always start with base layers and what I'm wanting to do is put down some colour on the paper. So I'm looking for my absolute lightest colour I can see within my reference and I can do this by simply comparing the reference to my swatches. So for this line, I would say it's a very light yellow. So all I want to do is put down this color nice and smoothly over the section that I'm drawing. I'm working in circular motions here so it is smooth and I'm pressing very, very lightly. And to help with this, I can hold the pencil quite far back and that stops me from being able to press too hard. Regardless of the texture that I'm using, I do always do a smooth base layer. So despite the fact that this line needs to have fair texture, I'm still using the smooth coverage for this section. From here, I want to gradually start working my way up through the colors. So I started at the absolute lightest color. I want to gradually move my way towards darker colors. So once again, I'm looking at my reference and looking for the next lightest color I can see. And then I'll put that in all the places that I can see that tone. So with this line, I'm really looking at the undertones of the fur and getting all of those marked in. Once I have got myself a really detailed base, I can then start thinking about any texture that I might be able to see. So for example, as I mentioned, this line needs to have a fur texture. And then I can still carry on working my way up towards the darker colors, but now beginning to think about the textures I can see. So for these first two steps, all I'm focusing on is putting down those base layers and working my way up through the colors. With the fur on the lion, the base layer is all the same color, but as I get more towards the mouth, for example, I need to put down different colors for the base layer. So the lightest color around the nose and around the edge of the mouth is different to the lightest color on the tongue. 
I am still working lightly throughout. I want to make sure that I'm able to get more pencil built up a little bit later. So once I've worked my way over the whole of the drawing and I've got something down for all of the lion, I can then start thinking about tweaking and adjusting things. So up until this point, I've been very focused and zoomed in on a specific area. It's at this point that I want to start looking at the lion as a whole. It makes my life a bit easier to see what's missing. So I want to take a step back and compare my drawing to the reference photo and work out what I think the drawing needs. So it's kind of like playing spot the difference. So for example, on this lion right now, it's looking a bit muted. It's not looking very vibrant. And I'm looking for the most obvious color that's missing. So here I would say initially it's kind of an orangey brown color. So I want to start adding some of that in. I'm not really worrying about any of the hair texture. I've already built up so much of that with the previous layers. I can just lightly shade over the top of what I've got to brighten it up. And then from there, I can take a step back again and see what the next color that I think is missing. So for example, here I would say it's kind of a pink tone and I can add that over the top in exactly the same way. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm really not thinking more ahead than the one color I'm currently working on. I want to fix that most obvious color that's missing and then I can take another look and see what the next most obvious color is that's missing. And you can see what a massive difference this makes from the beginning of me doing this to the end. It's just made the whole lion far more vibrant. Now, the last thing I want to do is add in any final details. And this actually can vary a lot from drawing to drawing. The final details on one could be vastly different to that on another. So for example, on this lion, I wanted to add in a bit more fur texture and also add in the whiskers. So I used a craft knife to scrape away some of the layers of pencil to build up that texture. I was then able to use my pencil to refine those details. I did exactly the same with my Highland cow. So started off by putting down base layers with the lightest colors I could see, adding this in really nice and lightly. So cream for the most of the body and a little bit of pink here and there. And then I could start with my lightest color, which is kind of an orangey brown to begin marking everything out. So marking out where all of the strands are on the forehead and also some of the major clumps of fur on the rest of the cow. I then have a very comprehensive template that I can add darker colors onto. And because I'm doing everything so lightly throughout the process, it doesn't matter if I've made a mistake because I can always correct that with some of the darker colors. So I can move on to a lighter brown, adding it in all of the areas that I can see this color. Then I can move on to a slightly darker, more reddish brown and add it in more of the darker areas where I can see this color and keep working my way up through those colors until by the end of it, I do have something that looks like a cow's face. But once again, it's not very vibrant and the colors will need adjusting. But I don't think about tweaking anything until I've drawn the whole of the cow. And then I can look at the drawing as a whole rather than as individual sections. So for this drawing, the most obvious thing I felt was missing was once again a kind of orangey brown color. So I just shaded over the top of what I already had to brighten that up. And then from there, I also noticed that it needed some more red tones and I also wanted to deepen down some of the darker areas. And then I could once again move on to the details which were very similar to the details on the lion because once again, it's fair texture and I wanted to add in some of the lighter areas. So let's move on to something completely different now. I'll show you how the process is still the same even with a completely different subject matter. So once again here, starting with the relevant base layers for the different areas on the pair. So it's more of a yellowy brown at the top and more of a green at the bottom. And then once again, I can start from those lightest colors and gradually work my way towards the darker colors until I do have the general shapes of the pair drawn in. And from here, I can tweak the colors and brighten everything up. From here, I wanted to add in those final last details, which on this pair would be the spots. And I do also use this method for when I'm drawing something like portraits. I start from the lightest base layers, work my way towards the darker colors. And you can see here how different she looks after I've tweaked all the colors at the end. She goes from looking extremely pale to really much brighter and more vibrant. All right, and that's how I go about drawing absolutely anything with color pencil. 
Full tutorials with real-time footage are available on my Patreon for all of the clips that you've seen within this video. My Patreon has over 200 hours of tutorials using colour pencils, graphite pencils and pastel pencils. And every tutorial includes sketch outlines, the reference photo and colour swatches of all of the colours I use. Now it's taken me years to figure out this process. If you'd like to watch a video where I cover some of the things I wish I'd known as a beginner, check out the video here. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like like, don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys, I'll see you in the next one.